All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about ready now to have our celebrity cook-off. Come on in and uh, make yourself at home. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't expect that so many people uh, would be coming, and we'd have had more chairs, more seats. But um, make yourself comfortable wherever you might be and get ready to enjoy what is going to be a very exciting cook-off between the two of our very prolific cooks, chefs in the uh, community. And um, this is going to pick the uh, chef Michael Blackie from Next. Next is in Stittsville, a wonderful, wonderful restaurant. Michael, identify yourself with a hand up there. It's Michael right and the boy. Now, you guys have the hot mics. Do you have hot mics for the boys? There you go. Michael, how old are you now? I'm, uh, I'm hitting the big 5-0 next day. The big 5-0. Oh, how, yeah. how long have you been a chef now? Uh, 30 years. 30 years. 30 years, three continents, and I've been in Ottawa now for almost 10 years. And 10 years in Ottawa. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're here, uh, and thank you for bringing your culinary expertise with you. Thanks. Blackie, are you ready to take on the young Norm Aiken over here? I'm ready to rumble. Norm! Norm over here has the same ingredients as Blackie has. And uh, Norm is the uh, chef the owner of one of the city's top restaurants, by the way, Juniper Kitchen and Wine Bar in Westboro Village. Give him a hand. Welcome him. Well, now, Normie, you know that Black here is uh, the 30 years cooking experience. What about you? Oh, I'm at what? 20 now? 20 you're 20. Oh, you're, 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 the, you're the young buck. Yeah, I am. <laughs> the buck. Okay. Oftentimes, so what happens is the young bucks show the old dog just how to do it. So we're going to find out before this is over. <laughs> What's happening here is we have two chefs with exactly the same ingredients. And you know, the truth is, they don't have a clue what they're going to make yet. That was the deal. We'll give you all these ingredients, look at them, and they're both doing that and puzzled. Look at them, they're puzzled. They're struggling now. What am I going to do with, what have you got there? Just yeah, tell me what you have. I think that's a good idea. Uh, so basically, uh, this was prepped and organized by one of my sous chefs last night after I left next. So I only looked at it when it came out of the truck. Megan, my sous chef, came down here. I pulled it out. We're looking at it. So what do we have? Norm and I have the same ingredients. All right. So we're starting off with roasted bell peppers, baby spinach. We got some herbs from the next garden, I see them here, some mint, some basil, some arugula, or as the Aussies like to call it, rocket leaves, good old butter, some cheese curds, that's going to mess me up, duck confit, the, you know, like, if you like bacon, you love duck confit, right? This is the French technique, cooked in its own oil. We got some shallots, we got the good old classic veal jus here that, and you know, you know it's good veal jus when it's all jiggly. Uh, some pulled beef shortbread, Mike McKenzie seed the sausage, a lot of you are familiar with this, an uh, incredible story of a gentleman who started a charcuterie company and is now known across the entire country, so we have his home, his house uh, chorizo, blueberries, blackberries, a cheese that Norm introduced me to, why don't you talk to uh, us a bit about the this cheese? This is the Prince Edward Island Gouda, done by Glasgow Glen yeah. Farms, uh, this is the chili gouda. This one's good. This one's very good. I want to look at it. Gouda, no, the Gouda is good. I get it. Gouda. And we also have some Napa cabbage, a cucumber, a half pound, two potatoes. Now you're both going to dig from the same supply center. No, no. I have my own over here. He's got his kit. I have my kit. And we both have the same three plates to choose from. Presentation is like good. Yeah, I think it's worth about 20 points. We'll find out from the judges shortly. So we both have the same plates, a slate from Lowe's, a piece of wood from Home Depot, and a crazy flat plate that's difficult to present on because can you imagine it's got a sauce? That's, that's from Ikea. Yeah, you can't be a drinking waiter at this kind of thing, right? It's not going to work, so. Norman, you introduce your assistant that's working away behind you there. Lynn Lefebvre. Lynn Lefebvre, ladies and gentlemen, has that Norman's assistant. Blackie, yours. Megan, Megan McKenzie, been with me since the inception of uh, Next. Give her a hand. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Now, gentlemen, you know, uh, if you didn't know it, you're going to be judged on this. Absolutely. We happen to have three very qualified judges, so do what you do and do it well, because they're going to be ruthless. I'm going to call them up here now, from, uh, and I want these judges to come forward, and, um, and we're going to have them sit and uh, watch the whole 
the whole scene going on up here now. Um, uh, one is an expert, uh, for, they're all, uh, two of them are expert food bloggers. Don Chow from Foodie Prince. Don Chow, come on up here, Don. Good man. And you can go to the website and you can Google Foodie Prince and you'll see Don Chow's uh, blog there. And uh, they all, these judges are all for food. All for the betterment of food. And uh, Don is uh, gaining a reputation as a very qualified individual to say what's good, what's not. And who's going to win today? It's on your shoulders, my man. <laughs> that's good. All right. So, that's one of our uh, cooks, one of our judges. And um, now, uh, I'm representing apartment 613, Pam Kapoor. Where's Pam? Come on up, Pam. Give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen, judge number two. Hi, Pam. Good to see you. Have a seat and join Norm over there. So just, Don, Don, just everybody's aware, uh, both Don Chow and Pam, blogging is something that has changed the hospitality community immensely. Everybody in this room knows who Andy Brisset was, and still is, an incredible writer for the Ottawa Citizen. We had one food critic in this city. Well, the social media world has changed so much across the entire country. These two people have pretty much put Ottawa on the map in terms of showcasing to the public what's going on in the Ottawa scene. And uh, I'm trying to get that out there. Well, that, that, that is up. good because that's going to earn you lots of points. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Thank you, Blackie. Appreciate that. Very good. And our third judge is a TV producer, a Gemini Award winner. She's also a painter. She does that as well. Very talented arts, industrial, industrious individual. Catherine Jeans is with us as our third judge. Hi, Kathy. Join the join our illustrious panel here. Yeah. So the three judges are in place. They're going to watch, and then more importantly, they're going to taste. They're going to taste, and you're going to get to taste. By the way, backstage, Norm, perhaps you could tell me what do you got backstage? There's a, a whole group of people preparing so, food. And I kind of pieced together a quick little play here for everybody's little tasty bits. He's done an arancini. I have some braised and pulled pork rib. Uh, and then a little bit of a preserved tomato splat. Let's call it that. Splat. And you're going to hand that out to the audience after for some Yeah, yeah so if as long as there's more than 200, we've got you covered. You're all going to get to try a collaborative dish that both of us have put together. We kind of swung it together last night. We made some cooked stains. Let's see what we have put Wonderful. together. And the judges will get to savor what you're about to do now. Yes, exactly. All right, do we have a starting time? And a uh, finish time I know is going to be at approximately 10 to the hour. You've got till then. At which point, at which point you're going to have to have whatever it is you're creating. Have you got an idea yet, Norm, what you're going to be making? I have a bit of an idea. Okay, and Blackie, are you going to... Why would I share that with my competitor? Oh, it's going to be amazing to see what happens. Well, let's get them started with a round of applause and let's get them started and let the cook off begin. Are you Go ahead, boys. I just, I just want everybody to know. Yeah. Some of you, uh, well, who's a Food Network fan? Show, show of hands there. Wow. You know, ten years ago there might have been one hand up, right? Does everybody remember the show with uh, Norm Aiken earlier this year? I see some hands waving. Norm, actually, I have stiff, stiff competition here today. Norm won Shop Canada. He brought home a ten thousand dollar price, and uh, yeah. So I've got my uh, okay. It's it's a bit old. School against new school. And for the record, I am not taller than Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. <laughs> and last but not least, we got to share this with you. I asked Catherine Jeans to come up here because Catherine is actually best friends to the two of us. I think the person who's going to struggle today is Catherine Jeans. Yeah, yeah, good luck. So good luck with that, Catherine. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to go. I think I'm good. You know, I think I can do it. All right. We have 50 minutes, eh? 50 minutes. I mean, you know, we can't just be like quiet, right? No, we've got to walk our way through this. We're not going to be like quiet for a few so. Hmm. So, um, I believe one of the judges actually tweeted out this morning that there's a, one of the parts of the, uh, oh, Pam, you got a microphone. Yeah, but it's not on. Is it not on? Do we got sound on, her, on uh, our judges? Do we do? Should be good to go. Why don't we talk a little bit about the criteria, Pam? Love to, chef. Um, so, 
So for those of you here waiting attentively for the cook-off, you can join us in observing what the chefs create. We will be looking for presentation with 25 points, originality, that's 15 points, portion size. Now this is interesting. In your opinion, does the dish seem adequate in size of food for a four-course menu? Okay, very interesting. Deep, deep thoughts here, people. Right? <laughs> I like this one, cleanliness, 20 points. Now, chefs, I'm huge on cleanliness, so please wipe those plates before we see them. Okay, I've already caught myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> Team spirit, oh, excellent. See, they both already began working with crowd, which is part of this 20 point allocation. Did they make the show entertaining? We can all decide that. What do you think? Yeah. And then take 20. So, when the time was called, did they stop cooking? So, I got any points for priming wow. the audience? You know, see the sauces? Chef, are you watching this? <laughs> I'm watching. He's driving. That's okay. Let him kill his, uh, kill his meat over here. I'm not coming over to help. <laughs> Is there a point for helping out, though? People are hungry. What Why do you burn something? No, not yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do a uh, potato roosty here. I'm from Prince of Island, so I have to showcase the potato. Do you have a question about the next chef? John just pointed out that we are asked to observe whether there's any sabotage. Going on. There's none of that. Absolutely. There won't be any of that. So if anyone in the crowd observes it and we miss it, please let us know. But these boys always play nice, don't you boys? Of course. It depends on what time of the day. If the wine's no flowing, it could be a lot of things. Well, if it's 8 o'clock at night, you're not playing well. That's it. So, yeah, you can see right there in the frying pan, we got some whole beef short rib. Some demi glass in there. Yummy, yummy. I'm not saying anything else. So I'm just giving the guy, I'm just giving Norm my over there. Is that, a, is that hot sauce? Yeah, sriracha. Oh. It's funny, right? Everybody thinks, you know, it's funny. People, they, they, like, they come to my restaurant, we serve, we serve this. They're like, oh, I love that stuff. It's from China. It's from San Francisco. Oh. Yeah. Like, because it's got, like, look, it's got all it's this Chinese right. imagery, Chinese yeah. imagery, and writing. And, the, and the, uh, the neighborhood where it was being made, the local city council tried to shut it down because evidently people were getting nosebleeds in the, in the neighborhood. That hot. And then, in the end, the, the, the city voted, the, the locals voted, and they're like, no, 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 we're okay with the nosebleeds. It's sriracha. We want to keep that. <laughs> so it stayed. I wish you folks out there could just be up here with us, because the judges and I have an opportunity to smell this food. Right here where we're standing, we're just filled. Are you filled? Yeah, look at this. Oh. God, it is absolutely incredible. Okay, so I would well, place. Okay, and uh, one of our judges is up there taking photography to no end. Cowboy. So, uh, the, the imagery you're capturing is going to go on your blog site, I can tell. You're going to blog this, aren't you? I hope so. Just on the uh, from your report. We have to share about the, the wonderful talent of Ottawa has for you. And these two, uh, they mentioned how um, social media and assessing the uh, view and us bloggers are putting, putting food from Ottawa on the map. It's not. They're putting food from Ottawa on the map because without them, we have nothing to write about, nothing to shoot, nothing to talk about. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Appreciate that. I think I need a hug. <laughs> We're having a food love in now. Food love in. And they're moving along as rapidly as they can. Do uh, you have an, uh, an idea yet, uh, Norm, what you're making over there? Have you decided what it is? Well, I'm originally from Prince Edward Island, so I'm going to put the potato out in the forefront. The potato? The potato. We're going to do a little potato roast here. So essentially grated potato, then we're going to fry it into like a little cake. So it's nice and crispy. Every good meal has a potato. It will be. Oh, oh, did I mention that you have to do three plates? That's fine. Three? That's no problem. Three different presentations, three judges, three plates. I hope I didn't mess up. No, that's okay. Is that okay? That, that, that could potentially be some sabotage points. Are they each eating 
three plates? Or is there one Every plate? judge will get, a, get their own plate from each of us. One plate from each of you, yes? Yeah. But does it have three different things on it? No, it's going to be the same elements presented in three different ways. I see. Are you good with that, Jeff? I'm good with that. There you go. So now we just triple the workload. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I used to handle a knife like that when I had fingers. <laughs> I used to do this when I was an apprentice. Oh my god, I'm still doing it 20 years ago. There you go. Uh, okay, nice spot. I'm almost there. Good, nice. Good old water. Does anybody smell the hair that's burning on my arm that I keep touching over this thing? Mm. Yeah. So we're going to have roast leg of arm? <laughs> Roast, uh, roast arm of Blackie. Roast arm of Blackie. Sloped arm of Blackie. So. Sloped arm of Blackie. I like that. Pretty much getting there. Norm, how far away are you? 25 minutes? No. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yes. Sir. So you can see on the big screens the presentation of what they're doing. You can see how their uh, their masterful uh, skills, culinary skills, are being shown on the live screens. Presented by this wonderful audio-visual company that uh, came in to uh, uh, set up the sound and the audio and uh, the big screens over there. You can give them a hand. The gentleman is right back there at the board. That's Shiva back there. Yeah, if you only had smell of vision you're right. You're right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can invent that for your next TV show, smell of vision Yeah, I like that people on their knees in front of their TV sets, sniffing their screens. It would be different. Oh, I see cheese is at it now. There's, there's cheese in there. That's uh, actually just potato oh, slices. Just potatoes? Yeah. I'm How do you do make it look like cheese? My, what a chef. <laughs> but I am going to incorporate this bad boy. This, che this cheese we do at next, we do it in a, uh, grits. We do a chili gouda grits with it. So... And I can't thank Norman enough. And you know, partnerships in the business are extremely important, but having traveled the world, worked in Hong Kong, Bali, Indonesia, Mexico, had so much fun. My kids were even born in Mexico. And today's my daughter's birthday. She's 15. They got a piñata at the house, and we're going to do the quintanilla. Did I get mi español? Is that No? Más o menos. Incredible though for a life of a chef, right? Not only do you get to cook and learn amazing food, but you also get exposed to culture. I don't know about you, but when I travel the world, the first thing I want to go after is street food. I don't want to eat in a hotel. I want to get out and I want to ask the taxi driver, okay, where's your family eat? Let's go there, right? And it's the best. As long as you got your twin ricks, you're good to go, right? Just get that twin rick shot. So, but, um, you know, back to my point about food and the culture in this city, when I came here, I was actually in Bali, Indonesia, and I got displaced by the bomb after 9-11, Then a bomb go off in, in Bali, and it decimated the community, the hospitality community completely collapsed. And my wife and I were looking at each other going, I wonder what's going to happen. And I said, I know what's going to happen, we're going to be leaving here. And sure enough, we left about a month later, we returned to my family, my, 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 my dad and my brother, and with Jill's side of the family, we're all in Toronto, and I kept hearing about this job opportunity in Ottawa, the Brook Street Hotel. And in 2003, I came to open it up. And you know, when you open up a hotel of that kind of caliber in suburbia, pretty crazy, pretty ballsy that Terry Matthews to do that. But when you do something like that, I'm telling you, any other city in the world, I would never have gotten the open support from, everybody remembers Kurt Waddell at the National Arts Center, a prolific, iconic chef in this town that pretty much trained everybody, if you were somebody in this town, got to go through the doors of that kitchen. I ended up, he was so open. I walked into his kitchen and the first thing he said, you want on my list of supplies, Blackie? And I'm like, are you serious? Because remember, I came from Bali, I'm from Ottawa, from Toronto. I don't know any suppliers here. So it's very open and warming. And the amount of collaboration that we do, going back to the cheese, I would not have this cheese if it wasn't for Norm. So we share ideas, and by doing so, and I've never had that Hong Kong Valley anywhere I went. It's one thing I love about this town. Great story. I would have to agree with that. I would have to agree with that. Norm, what are you whipping up over here? Maybe you can tell us a bit about what's going on in your world. What's this side? So I've created a little oven over here. 
let's cook these potatoes and nice and crispy on both sides. So I've got all meats in there. So I got duck bone feed, the short rib, and the trees are all in my potato. So this is going to be like my little base. Okay. So I just got to make sure that cooks through. Uh, I'm going to do a little salad, and that's about all I have figured out. For you. So you're still working it's on what name. it is you're creating. Have you got a name for it yet? No. Not yet. We'll see it whenever it's on the plate. Yeah. Don't don't and did I hear you were in Mexico cooking as well? No, I have not been to Mexico. Is that Blackie Only was for vacation? Yeah. Ah, Blackie was in Mexico. Yes, he's the Spanish guy. Yeah. Yeah, if you see. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Rhode Island. I trained under Chef Michael Smith. And then I started out as a dishwasher with him. Right? And then I kind of moved up through the ranks with him. And then I came to Ottawa with 14 years ago. There you go. Yeah. See, folks, that's what happens. He started, he started off as a dishwasher in Prince Edward Island, imagine. And today, he's renowned in that community as one of our founder chefs. That's what you do when you put your mind into something, huh? You betcha. That's how it rolls down. You gotta got start, you gotta start right at the beginning and work your way up. Remember, I was just a dishwasher at a restaurant. You do. Yeah, Shelly's Seafood Restaurant. My first task, the chef said, did I hear somebody clap for Shelly's? Rock on, girlfriend. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there. I knew nothing. I only knew that I wanted to buy a bicycle at the Hotel Mall in Oakville. And the chef said to me, his first task was, Blackie, I want you to go downstairs, bring up some curly parsley, and I want you to wash it. It was a dishwasher. I put it through the dishwasher. <laughs> The biggest hammer I got from this guy was Swiss, his name was Aloise, caught me in the fridge with my hand in the freezer in a bucket of peppermint ice cream. I've never had a more quivering moment of fright in all my life. He looked at me and he was like, you're a loser, and closed the door on me. And I just sat in the freezer for like 10 minutes going, you're a loser, was his name Arnold? Uh, no, Aloise. Aloise. Aloise, yeah, it was hilarious. It was, uh, and then that was my first intro to it. And, you know, we always say, you know, as a great chef, you gotta be able to do everything. You gotta be able to get in the dish pit, you gotta be able to bring the food to the table, you gotta keep the smile going. I have no idea what I'm making here, by the way. Just You're still okay, uh, just check in the seat. The judges, the judges are curious. Oh, we had a theory that you were, Don wondered if you were attempting to make a pave. I could potentially be making a pave. But we don't want to influence you. No, please. Direction. Uh, but but it, uh, it's looking good. It's, it's it's actually surprising where it's, where it's come from. Tell the crowd what a pave is. Oh, so a pave, uh, you know, now it depends. If you did an egg-based pave, you know, it would be almost like a quiche without the craft crust. But then there's also the classic pave in the French technique where you just take, and some of you might know it as gratin or pomme And what that basically is is layers of potato with the little cheese, a little bit of 35% cream, a little salt and pepper actually going there and bake it in the oven. I mean, those are my favorite potatoes. And I can tell you, so many chefs forget to put nutmeg in that bad boy. And that's the classic. I mean, you know, I was trained by chefs who were like, when they trained me, they were like 50 and I was like 16. So these guys are out of the game now, but you know, I would just look up to them because the stuff that would come out of their mouth sounded like Spanish when I was a young boy. I'm like, sorry, what was that? Polonaise? The amazing thing I see in the chef's hands is the ability, by doing it for a living, constantly, constantly at it. There's an art, there's almost a poetic motion to everything, your hands, your arms, the way you swing a, a pan around, the way you add your sauces. Yeah. I'd love to have you pour me a double scotch. I bet you you do that different too. Dark and stormy is my poison. <laughs> Most people know that about me. Love my ginger beer, love the Gosling's rum. It's killer stuff. Uh, just before I opened up next, last year, my wife Jillian, who's manning our booth, the next booth is over in the corner over there, um, she took me to Vegas. I'd never been to Vegas. What an amazing experience. Dark and Stormy's by the poolside, big burp, big gulp style. I'm talking like 32 ounces. Yep. And I had two of those. I was sleeping by like three o'clock. I was definitely poaching in the pool. And uh, I was amazed at how many people we're from Canada. In the pool, it was like everybody. There was couples from Ottawa, Toronto, Winnipeg, everywhere. Let's talk about your restaurants. Maybe both of you could uh, give us a little breakdown so 
If you have to travel and go to these two restaurants in our community, you're in for uh, a real treat for you too. So, maybe, uh, Norman, we'll start with you. Can you give us uh, a rundown of your restaurant? Chamber Kitchen and Wine Bar in Westboro, 245 Richmond Road. What we do? Canadian food. We're in Ottawa, we're in the nation's capital, so our primary focus is on Canadian ingredients. We like seafood. I'm from Pittsburgh Island, so I like my seafood. So I bring in uh, I bring in everything from Atlantic right now. So I've got a partnership with Fogo Island Fisheries, so I can get Newfoundland shrimp. Nobody even knows that Newfoundland has shrimp. Right? It's pretty funny. You still, uh, you, still, you, still, you still haven't given me that contract. No, I know that. <laughs> I hold on for a little bit. In fact, in fact, the shrimp in Newfoundland is probably some of the biggest because of the coldest waters. I buy the little tiny guys, and seriously, they have little nuggets of lobster. You do. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, I can get turbot. Last time I got turbot, I was in Europe. Uh, the cod, Newfoundland cod, right? So that's on my menu now. Uh, I'm pulling lobster from Atlantic right now. Uh, also haddock I use quite a bit. Other than that, uh, my meats, primarily local, Quebec, Ontario. As far as my beef, it all comes from Alberta, AAA, the best I can get. Uh, my lamb is usually from, uh, from Quebec and or Ontario. Well, something's shaping up there now. Whoa! See that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> something's ready. Back in the van. Oh, he turned it over. That's what he's doing. Now your restaurant, Blackie, you talk about your place. Well, many people know me from opening, I spoke earlier about the Fresh Street Hotel, came in 2003. Uh, actually, my longest staying job, one thing you should always know about Chef is we have, uh, very we have very high turnover Beautiful. rates. We don't seem to stick around anywhere very long, and I was there for six years. I had an amazing time. I, I really loved what we tried, what we achieved there. We achieved it as a poor diamond restaurant. We achieved it as a restaurant in a hotel. How often you go to a hotel and the food set, uh, operations that are in there is more kind of cafeteria-ish, it doesn't really have a distinction to it, it represents the region, and that's what we tried to do, and I felt we achieved that immensely there. Now, move forward, I, I was three and a half years at the National Arts Center as executive chef and director, but I was missing that passion of being connected with my guests. I mean, the cafe is an incredible place, but you know, you rock out 300 covers in 45 minutes. It's incredible the amount of speed, you know. If I did a normal service like that in a restaurant, that'd be about 1,200 covers in one night. So it's a great experience, loved it, built it, amazing team. And I needed to get back into the kitchen in terms of cooking for my guests and meeting my guests. This is called maca, by the way. This is black maca. Black uh, maca. Uh, no. maca. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you officially confirming that this dish you are making is maca? <laughs> no, 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 This not is not just a closer. So, so the idea behind Next was to actually break the mold, and for me, to break the mold and get away from the three core areas where foodies are going. Westboro, where Norm is, and one of the big boys dancing in that neighborhood. We have the market, and then we also have the clean. And I was like, I live in the West End, and all there is is Brook Street and about three other places that are independents. I'm sorry, but I'm tired of all the cookie cutter restaurants out there, and I don't know about you, but I don't like eating frozen food unless it's frozen ace baguette, <laughs> right? I'm just not into that. And you know, I, I'm very proud of the neighborhood that I'm in, and this opportunity came up to get a partnership with Next. 11,000 square foot facility in Stittsville. We're worth the drive. If you're a foodie, the drive means nothing, because you're going for the food experience. It's Ottawa, you can be anywhere in half an hour. Yeah. We're not Toronto folks. We have, I have guests that come from like Westboro and they tell me the time it takes them to come from Westboro out to Western Stittsville is the same amount of time it takes for them through traffic to get down to the market. And I was like, really? I didn't do that, I didn't know that. But you know, it's kind of shows, shows you what the ability is out there. So, I, and I love the people just walk into my restaurant and they haven't even eaten, speaking of which they eat today. Um, they walk in the restaurant and they're like, thank you so much for doing this. And I'm like, thank you for the what? And they're like, well, thank you for putting a restaurant on the map out here because I'm tired of driving downtown. You know, the, the metropolis of the, of the city of Ottawa has expanded so much. 
and people don't realize what's going on in Sitka. Well, we want to thank uh, we want to thank uh, Delauri because uh, he got everybody tuned into just beyond the fringe. Just beyond the fringe. So that's, now, right. that's where you are and doing very well. You know that it's 12:27 p.m. I know that you've got approximately. What are you giving us some time? 23 minutes to give your sisters a name. I can't believe you don't know what you're calling the district there. Are you still creating her? I am. Still creating. I am. Yes. What are you slicing now? That's this what? This is the ace baguette. Oh, that's the ace baguette. So I'm going to make little mustard crisps. So you do that like an art form. I, I tear it off the wolf. But you use that big knife. Big knife. And this lovely little uh, crouton like, uh, oh, maybe they're going to be croutons. Right. Ah, I just went into something. Croutons happening over here. I don't know, Wayne, I think you should get a show over here. the crowd and ask how much more time. Should we be ten more minutes? Should we be five more minutes? Oh, here we go. This is it. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to set the parameter yet because people well, know. know that Norm is uh, ready to agree to that. Norm, how much time do you need to finish your dish? Ten minutes? How much time do you need I'm to sorry, finish I didn't hear the competitor. What was that, Rumble? Ten. Ten. He said ten, ten minutes. I could go in five if I had to. Well, he needs 10. Right. So, what do you say? Should we set this for 10 minutes from now? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right, it is uh, coming to 12.30. So at 12.40, we're going to ring the big gong bell, and they're going to have to present to the judges that which they created. Deal? The audience say deal? Deal. All right, you've got until 12.40. You have another, another 11 minutes. Can I go for a bio break? I just gotta like get off. No. Wayne, no. I was gonna say, Chef Norm is pandering uh, to the judges with all this butter. Have you seen what he's putting into this bed? Really? I didn't use any butter. Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> don't try to get there. Pass me. I know my butter. Butter's better. That looks fabulous. What's going on in there? So I'm just gonna crisp up the baguette, and then I'm going to throw a little bit of mustard into the pan, kind of glaze it a little bit. So then they have a little bit of heat to it. Then I'm probably going to use this gouda somewhere. My potato, hopefully, will be cooked by the time we need it. You know, people should make their croutons at home more often. Don't you think, guys? Yes. Look how easy it is to make these croutons. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Delectable. Yeah. Making food at home, nothing quite like it. Just make sure you got that glass of wine close by. It's, you're so more forgiving on yourself when you got a glass of red wine in your mouth. Ah, it's okay. So oh, it's not so Or a cold beer, right? Cold beer, yeah, absolutely. Jump. Has anyone seen the sriracha that they use yet? It's over here. It's soft? Smoking. Are you ever stuck? Do you think sriracha yet? I've used my sriracha, yes I have. I put it into my braised uh, short rib. I got it going in there. So, no sugar, eh? Oh, Megan, you didn't pack any sugar. Even the way it juiced that looks good. I can eat this whole thing with the camera as well. Yeah, let's get the cameraman in there. I mean, he got the golden brown rusty, but are you ready for this? Tilt it down, tilt it. Pukachu, pukachu, pukachu. Look at that, it's not bad, it's all we do. Oh, yeah. What is it? What is it? I got, I got some maca. Oh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, potato maca with the, uh, the chili cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to start working on my sauce now. So I'm going to make a classic Biggerod style. Basically taking shallots, blueberries. Going to do a little bit of the Colsex Triple Crunch mustard. Yeah, are you familiar with the Colsex Triple Crunch? Maybe. Yeah, from Toronto, St. Lawrence Market. Family's been in existence for like, what is it, normally 30 years? That guy's been rocking out that mustard, and he does like 20 different bland friends. Uh, Grace in the Kitchen in Canada sells it. I frankly go through so much of it, I gotta go all the way to Toronto and get it. And um, it's kind of, I call it pop rock candy for adults. Sweet types of mustard seeds. So when it goes in your mouth, it's kind of like pop, 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 as it goes off. I'm sure this crowd remembers pop rock. <laughs> I'm good, I see some smiles. Is this some giggles? No, no, can't. Can't, I get disqualified. Have I heard you introduced what's cooking behind you on uh, the second table? 
We're talking about our team? Says who? Over here. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, Lynn, you want to describe what you're doing? Sure, we're going to get a microphone down there, Pam. I'm coming, I'm coming. And gentlemen, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn is going to talk a little bit from the uh, Juniper. But Hi. We'll Let's give it up for Lynn, everybody. And over here I have a tomato sauce that we'll be pairing with it. And then over here Megan has an arancini, chocolate inside arancini. We have a craft and cheese arancini. Ooh. And then we'll talk that with some cookies. And in case people don't know what arancini is, arancini is a breaded deep fried risotto ball. Mm. Risotto is a soft cooked arborio rice, filled with goodness, cheese, stock, everything. Dirty. You're not going to have a chance to nibble all this stuff. You and the audience are going to get a bite soon. Uh, I think what will happen is once we finish the plating, we'll let the judges do their tasting, and then Norm and I will go out and have a. No, we'll have to give the ladies a hand. And we'll start bringing the dishes around the front. So we'll just ask in an Oregon fashion, once we break down, we'll start bringing the dishes up to the front, hang around for the results, see where this goes. Can we get a time check, Wayne? Where are we on this? 12.33, Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Presentation and taste testing by our judges. Okay. Who, well, by the way, have done a remarkable job. These aren't judges who just sit on their duck. They've been walking around. They've been looking. They've been smelling. They've been checking this thing out. They're going to be resident experts in the moment. And tweeting. And tweeting. And it'll all be on their blog sites. Or maybe on a television show yet to be invented. Created. I heard you saw the show. You were here in the middle of one right now, huh? Yeah, we are. We're in the You get time to tweet? We get time to tweet. It's going to be exciting next year. We'll look for the Food Network together. Uh, can't say right now, but I uh, wanted to pick that edge for sure. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. That's wonderful. You've got about six minutes, guys. Six minutes. Yes, sir. For a finished dish with a name on it. We've all been waiting to see what they're going to call it. Yeah, I'm hung up on muck. I'm sorry. Muck. You know what muck is? I don't know what muck is. I think it's a pan full of muck stuff. Between 12, 10.30 and midnight, you go to your fridge. You got some leftovers, you got some fresh stuff, you got some old stuff. You put it all in a pot, you cook it up, you sit down with your friends, you have a glass of wine, you're like, this is like seriously the best thing I've ever had in my life. And it usually comes out of the fridge at the late at night. It's called mucca. Mucca, yeah. Like when I was a young apprentice, I mean, you gotta understand, I don't get to eat, I get to taste, but I don't get to eat when the guests are cooking, eating, right? A square meal, I eat at midnight. And some of the best meals I did was just going over to another chef's house and ripping his fridge to pieces. <laughs> or her fridge to pieces. That's how it would go down. All right. I'm ready to go. I just got a dirty plate going on here. So that's what you do at the restaurant. But Blackie, Chef Blackie, what do you do at home? Do you cook? I'm not the chef in my house. I have to, I'm, I'm so you're, being very honest. So you're under her control yeah. too. Before Jillian See, I told you, a woman is always in charge. Oh, Julian. listen, Charlie. Yeah. Julian, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Julian uh, is an amazing chef, uh, and she's uh, she's done so many amazing things. And I got to tell you, I'd say at least twenty percent of the inspiration for my food and my restaurant comes from what Julian makes. I'm like, really? You're a smart man to admit. A smart man to give credit to Jillian because Jillian's working hard she's in over your, that booth. She's over in that booth over there. And Jillian, I know you can hear your husband brown nosing all the way across the room. But uh, you know, that's wonderful to hear. Good for you, Blackie, that you would give credit to your wife for showing you the way. Absolutely. Uh, it's a I'm proud, right? proud of that man. Humility. 20 years married. We're going to be 20 years next year, and our plan is to go to Italy. Yeah, we wanted to go to Italy four years ago, but the kids had to vote. We take, uh, we take turns every year, and that was the year for the kids. We had to go to Walt Disney World. Uh, I was like, what about like, you know, Alba and Region? We rent a house, mopeds, we buy food, and my son's like, I don't think so. I want to go see my house. Okay. 
right. So, so Julie and I are going to take off next year. Well, that's what we're going to do. And uh, you know, I mean, it's one of the cornerstone cuisines in the world, right? I still have no idea what I'm doing here. Chevy's plating. What's the time limit here now? What are we at? Looks like a fancy poutine says dawn. Fancy poutine. Ah, the dishes now being served. This is now being presented to get ready. At least, at least Blackie is, Norma's as well. Okay, the dish, the three dishes are out. The slate, the wood, and the, and the uh, china. Could you call that china? Ceramic? China, yeah. China, china. So china, slate, and wood. Now, officially, Norm, what are you, what are you classifying this dish? What do you call it? Uh, <laughs> Let's call that potato. Um, it's gonna be a pan poutine. That's it. Pan I, have, poutine. I have cheese curds, I have chorizo, I have duck confit, and pulled short ribbon. And you call this a pan poutine? It's gonna be a pan poutine, how's that? All right, pan poutine on, on the china, pan poutine on slate, you got it. pan poutine on uh, wood. Oh, it looks so good. And the judges are gonna get to savor that. And here is your presentation on slate wood and china. And what is it, Blackie? I don't know. I just love sucking my fingers. So, oh, this is called sucking your fingers. <laughs> you have a name for this? Yeah, I do. Um, it's basically well. I got two proteins in here, right? I got the duck confit. I got the braised short rib. The braised beef short rib I've done with uh, a little bit of sriracha inside. I'm just getting really grab a spoon here. I've also got the duck confit, which I'm going to put down. It's going to be a layered effect, is what I have going on here. You know, I think about six, seven years ago, people used to call it deconstructed. I'm going to call it put together real quick. <laughs> and then I have a lovely little salad. Again, go back to my wife, Jillian. Wonderful thing she always does at home. Fennel, arugula, lemon, fresh lemon juice. None of that real lemon stuff, okay? And uh, a little touch of sugar, and, not, and, and it's killer. And, and it, not to be outdone, over here, Norm has just put up some veggies. And what are you putting out now? More potato? No, this is the uh, little crispy baguette. Crispy with some baguette now. Ah, so look, they're building, they're building as we go. That looks wonderful. The judges will get to savor these and make another decision. Is it 12.40 yet? Who's the official time? Doc, are you the official timekeeper? One minute to go. One minute. One minute, ladies and gentlemen. And then we're going to savor this. The judges will come and look and savor. And uh, they'll come up with some decisions. And then you're going to get a chance to have something to eat as well. Exactly. Okay, so a little lemon sprinkle here. That's good. And over here now, you put a little sauce in there. Berries, I noticed, Blackie. Yeah, I took some black. 30 seconds, boys. Get those berries going. 30 seconds. Blacks are done. All right, Norm is done, ladies and gentlemen. Norm is finished with his All right. And we got a 15 seconds over here as we put the radishes in place. And I noticed some lovely black fruit. We have to count down now, Wayne. Are you using From 10. You are using radish. 10, 9, 8, everyone. 7, 6, 5, come on. 4, 3, hurry up. 2, one! Okay! Pots down and everything! Give him a hand! There's our dish created. Well, now we're going to be... We're going to be... We're asking our three judges to come and preview this now. Or are you going to present it to them? What yeah. would you like to do? Why don't you take it to their table? I'll bring it right over for them. You put them on their table and then they can sit at their table, savor it, and we can watch their reaction. Okay. We'll ask the cameraman to get down front so he can have a really good look at the... Uh, the glee and the joy, the sumptuousness of these dishes. <laughs> All right, Norm, you go ahead and add yours there. Wow. Lovely. There's the wood plates. There's the slate. They almost look the same. Huh? I was just going to say, they kind of look the same. We're missing uh, one china dish, though. One china plate. Yep. Here it comes. You don't want to do that in your restaurant. Don't do that. You don't forget a plate. And there is the food for the judges to look at and now to savor. They've seen the process. Now let's, it's all in the taste test. Forks, please. Absolutely. And I think <laughs> this you is guys, a small request. You probably need some water. It's all on the beds. I don't think the room wants to see us eat with our hands, or no. do you? Do we need some knives and forks, spoons, yes, utensils? Please. 
Right here. There is them. We have them. Here we go. We're giving you our finest china. Yeah. The, uh, it's the it's the real plastico. <laughs> go on, you're checking his dish out. From oh, Shenzhen. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay. You've just been you just been pilfered over here. You pilfered over here. You pilfered you. <laughs> okay, judges. Cool. There are your dishes. Now go ahead and uh, start the process and let's observe. This is Norm's. This is Mike. This is Norm's. I have no idea. Well, there's the roast Yeah. So I guess we, uh, we should probably start, yeah? Is everybody hungry out there? Because it's like, oh, my battery's gone. It's, sorry, it's 2.20. Yeah, a little late lunch, a little nibble. Uh, All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do some waves for everybody. As judges continue their taste test, a reminder that Lou Nelson will be here at one o'clock. And Lou is uh, an extremely, extremely good Tom Jones uh, brought to you in living color. He looks like him, sounds like him, sings like him. You're gonna wanna touch him. You, no, you're gonna wanna kiss him. No, you're gonna wanna take him home. So we'll introduce Lou to you there shortly. And, uh, but the judges right now are making up their minds, savoring. God, I'd love to be a judge right now, wouldn't you? Aren't we just missing the boat, being an observer? All right, there's some conversation in amongst themselves, and they're going to come up with a decision on who the winner is of the cook-off between Blackie and Norm. What do you think of a salad, or Norm's salad? It's perfectly dressed, Chef Norm. The vinaigrette is delicious. Yeah. I agree, and I love the potatoes. Being a new feed, Norm, it hit my heart here, buddy. Really good. What do you think, Norm? Don, what are your thoughts on Chef Norm's plate? Perfectly, perfectly cut in mosti. You go to a restaurant, the problem, problem with the mosti is that the, uh, the cooks don't have the time to put it on uh, to do the other ones don't work it, so that can get across like this. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. The visibility um, of the salad goes really, really well with the most uh, uh, of the spatty. Um, where's the duck coffee? Norm. Hello. Chef. Yeah. Duck coffee anywhere? In mine? In yours? Absolutely. Chef Norm. Where can we taste the duck coffee on your plate? All meats in the uh, roasting. In the roasting. Yeah, so John Protein have gone into the potato roast. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Oh, very nice. Again, we want to thank uh, Orchard View Living Centers by the Pizziato Group and Oakwood Renovation Experts for providing all the entertainment on this stage for the weekend. Uh, they are two of the, thank you, and wonderful contributors to the Mature Lifestyle Show here today. The judges are getting closer now, and they're conferring. Okay, we're moving on to Chef Blackie's plate. Come on up, folks. Oh. You're welcome. Uh, it's a combination dish that I'm serving up the front right now. As we mentioned earlier, it is a arancini. It's a risotto ball, very classic Italian, from Nex. And underneath, we've got the pulled uh, Norman. Talk a little oh, bit about the protein is it. Yeah. Color is at the front in the bus band, ladies and gentlemen, when you come up. Pork rib, and Without then we the said, what was it? Tomato, tomato splat, pepper splat. <laughs> hey, those all from tart tail. <laughs> there we go. And then my favorite garnish in the world, crispy fried leeks. You're welcome. I know. Yes, sir. We'll get one set up for you. We got set up. 
Yeah. Yes, we're back. Are we missing a ball? Okay. Oh, that's true. They both shaved it up. Yeah. One, uh, here. Thank you so much. Oh, you can taste the uh, shiratsu, right? Is that right? Mm. Oh. Oh. Chef Black is good. I'll, I'll just propose more up there. Uh, and roll well, So good. Loving the berry schmear. Oh, me too. Yeah, the arancini, like classically, they just grind breadcrumbs up. It's very fine, but at the restaurant in Axe, we did it with a bit of formula. Let's give it a little texture at the back. And, you know, for those who haven't been out to Next yet to come for dining, we're open Tuesdays to Fridays. Unfortunately, uh, for me, well, for you, not for me, our restaurant is closed every Saturday until January 2010 due to events, weddings, that kind of thing. Which are more than a restaurant. It's 11,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah. We do weddings, we do corporate events, and everything. Thank you. Well, I'm certain there will be a lot of uh, people checking out both your establishments. So, you can take advantage of the drive and uh, experience a new culinary, bit of culinary bliss. Coming through, Wayne, recommend you. Yes, come ahead. Come ahead. Hey, Look at this. Good. Here we are serving the, the throngs now. It just happens to be noon hour. Little wonder you're hungry. There you go. You know the food is good when they're lined up coming down the middle of the center of the aisle. And, uh, yeah, this would be fun at the restaurant. Out of the wings. Yeah, wouldn't it be great? How many covers do you think you'd have here? You'd have 350, yeah, 400, yeah, yeah. 400 covers today. I wouldn't have to worry about anything. I just, uh, well, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy it, ladies. Thank you. Should have grabbed a fork here. Nope. I think we're about 120 portions. All right, we're just about there. Do you enjoy? Oh yeah. I gotta be nuts, right? As a chef, eating it right off the pass like this. What was I thinking? All right, we gotta go back into production. Oh, an arancini down. That's gonna be chefies. Okay. That would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, the judges have not made a decision yet. We're just waiting. They're still, obviously, there's quite a. We are hungry too. Yeah, they've got to look at everything. They'll confer and we'll let you know who the winner is. How would you discover two plates? Our judges are getting ready. Well, uh, while we're writing down our scores, yep. I thought I'd share with the, the crowd some of the chats that we had while tasting. Okay. Chef Norm, who presented us the potato roasty with a number of delicious ingredients cooked into it, including the proteins, um, and the, the croutons was just such a delicious, flavorful plate, and we all felt like it was very comforting, and certainly something that you would enjoy as a perfect lunch, and not too heavy that you couldn't go back to work afterwards. And then we described Chef Blackie's plate as something more late night. Yeah. Also comforting, but probably requiring a nap afterwards. <laughs> Maybe a, a cuddle with somebody. Yeah, I love it. But some exercise. Don used air quotes with the exercise. Uh, but both outstanding, outstanding offerings. Thank you, chefs. Thank you. Well, presentation. All Making all their notes. Coming up with the final tabulations. And we'll be ready to announce the winner momentarily. Okay, the judges are putting out the final we are, we are one minute away, Wayne. All right, one minute away. You're welcome. Are you good? Okay. Right there. 
And we're down, that's about the end of the business, I guess. Yeah, I've got maybe about 40 less to do. Yeah, go for 40 homie balls, more or less 40 up. Well, we hope we got most of you fed, at least give you a taste. Next year, knowing that uh, 55 plus has announced yeah, that they're going to, uh, this is the beginning of a, an annual event. They decided uh, that they were going to have something called the uh, 55 plus lifestyle show every year. And you just experienced the first one, the beginning of it. So we'll have it again next year. We'll have the same idea and, and more next year. So everybody's pretty happy. Carol, you're pretty happy about how things have gone. By the way, this is this is uh, Carol. She is uh, she's in charge of. Uh, let's just say she's in charge of the boys. I know George Jr. and George Sr. The Coils uh, after 26 years, and then Carol, of course. But she's the woman, and I keep saying the woman has the power. Anyway, you kept it in line. You did a good job. So Carol. She's up here helping serve. There you go. That's wonderful. There you go, Carol. About 20 uh, samples left here, Wayne, and then we're done. Okay, this is the last we sample stuff. We're down to about 12 dishes. That's about it. And the judges are getting close to their final tabulation. And these are the last dishes. All right, it was about 12 of them there. That's it. Anybody else? Oh, my God. Oh, well, this is it. Here it is. Here you okay, go. ladies and gentlemen, the judges are about to... Oh. Last dish right here. Do you uh, have the envelope? Yes, but we need a drum roll. need a drum roll? Oh. Here's my best drum roll. You All right, Ron. Wait, just back up a little bit, Wayne. This is unbelievable. Sorry. Wayne, back up a bit. My microphone are too close. Wayne, back up a bit. I need some space. Hey. Just kidding. I don't. Come close. This is unbelievable, everybody. Unbelievable. Whew. Chef Norm. The total number of points awarded to you by our humble panel, 292. And don't ask me what that's out Don't ask me what that's out because you didn't do that now. And Chef Blackie, in a squeaker, 294. Oh! Congratulations, Chef Blackie! I would think so. And chef That's all good good. Well. Everyone, congratulations to the chef at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you come within two points on the scale of the 300 scale, 292 and 294. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, judges, for what you've done. Thank you to our chefs. We're going to be celebrating tonight. Uh, we'll be in uh, Charlottetown at Law 40. Drinks on us. <laughs> good for you. And thanks to the assistants back there, too, for uh, helping out the uh, gentleman in front. Thanks to everybody for taking part, and we invite you to stay with us. A very, very entertaining celebrity cook-off. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Tom Jones is next.